Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. And welcome back to another Tuesday live stream artist chat. Today, I am super excited to be talking to another virtual art hive person. Um, another hive originally, I think, located in Montreal, but due to this interesting, strange time we all find ourselves in, um, an art hive that has become virtual as well. Hello, <laughs> welcome. And during this time, so what this means, of course, is that this virtual hive is available to more people in this community to enjoy and appreciate. So um, thank you, everyone. I know I've been doing this uh, for a while now. In the last few weeks, I've been doing something a little different, focusing on these virtual hives. I've just become fascinated with the resources that are out there, the, the ways that people can connect with one another and create with one another and all the different well, the, what creativity means to different people, different places, different cultures. And today I would love to invite, uh, let's see if I can, let's see, Hania Tohidi on uh, to be our another wonderful guest, uh, founder of the Virtual Persian Art Hive. And without further ado, let's invite her on. Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. And as we're talking, if you have questions for Hanie, please let me know. <gasps> Hello, welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mary. How are you doing? I am okay. I'm so, so, uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy that you're here, that you're able to join us. And it means a lot that you're taking time out of your busy day to chat with us, because I know you've got a lot going on. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be part of it. It's such a great initiative. Thank well, you for spreading the word around. No, I, I think it's, I think this is a very selfish endeavor on my part. In the beginning, it started for like the living rooms community, but now over time, I'm beginning to realize that this is enabling us to connect in with so many more people, so many other people that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet if I was just focused on my own art hive, right? That's very true. And it's a very uh, nice way to put it as like, oh, I have to think about it. It's a great wisdom, and uh, that's very, very true that I have to reflect on that as well. <laughs> well, for those folks who might be watching right now who aren't familiar with, with you or your hive, could you introduce yourself a little bit, tell them a little bit about you and the Persian Art Hive? So my name is Hanie, and um, I moved to Canada like seven years ago. Uh, my background was art and uh, graphic design. I was a teacher, and uh, somehow I got into my research um, to the point <clears throat> to do some research about art therapy. And when I entered, sorry, <clears throat> I entered Canada, that was my big dream. And I feel like um, a part of me as an immigrant was always missing. And that somehow led me to go for towards advocating and um, creating space for the community. Um, and uh, after like finishing my art therapy degree, uh, I had the help of Janice as usual, like she was a big supporter and uh, she helped me a lot in creating this space. And I'm glad it somehow came in the right time, unfortunately with the Ukrainian plane crash. Um, we had to start before um, I was anticipating, um, but, it came in the good time. So is that, it sounds like that's when um, the Art Hive initially was founded. It just happened to coincide with that. Horrible... Well, the idea was like um, created before uh, with the sanctions um, coming from US, uh, like putting back the sanctions. I feel like uh, a lot of us felt the pressure in, in, among the community. And um, that was the starting point of, me thinking like um, like the community need more and more support because it's going to get worse and worse. <laughs> like it, my gut feeling was saying like, it's going to be a hell. But um, yeah, the, that was the moment I was like, okay, stop thinking about what if it doesn't go well? What if this or that just started? And it's unfortunate that uh, such a huge trauma had to kind of move me to the point of uh, not being stopped by my fears, but 
Mm. Again, like trusting the universe, things come in its own time. And um, that was the time to start. And we had the good um, week then really like students really uh, came in and like participated. We took the artworks to a ceremony held at school and showed the artworks and um, the ceremony. Um, it gave the um, people inside the ceremony space to create if they didn't want to express their emotions like or just to regulate their emotions within that space and um, like contain their, their emotion, which was amazing. I never felt like an archive can be used in a space of griefing, um, grieving. Yeah, that's a really interesting. Uh, I think right now in the last, well, maybe the last year, I'm learning so much more as well about what art hives can be and who art hives can welcome and who art hives are for. I think it's something we use the word community to describe so much. It becomes a catch all word to describe everything and everyone. But I think it's worth it to really look and to consider what does community mean? And for you, it sounds like there was some fear. Were there some fear or anxieties in starting this hive? Was there any, like, any particular reason that, around that? And you, if that's too personal a question, you can just say, no, Mary, I don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a very good question. As the whole idea of displacement mm -hmm. um, is such a, um, um, how can I say, it, it, it kind of turned the world upside down. And that was my feeling from the first day, I guess, uh, I started um, to be in, like, in actual community in Canada, like being involved with others. I felt like I'm coming from the Mars <laughs> somehow, I'm coming from a very different place, very different way of thinking or habits, just habits and rituals and the concepts, even the concept of time was challenging. So I had to kind of think of myself as someone being reborn and had to recreate myself as a one-year-old, two-year-old, three-years-old kid. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is that when you, I feel um, my understanding is that when we get displaced, um, we have different way of being reborn and recreating ourselves, our identity. And that's the thing that brings a little bit confusion and division and the whole idea of like where we are coming from, this collective trauma that is impacting us. It's already putting like dividing us into groups. Unfortunately, that's something we carry with ourselves that if I don't belong to group X, then I have no right to exist. Like, um, so it's like, thriving and thriving to really prove that I have value and it just like within me is um just I, I I had to fight for all like simple ideas and that's the part that I had to move from my culture and understanding like the Canadian culture that our differences is okay and uh, we are accepted no matter what and um, like not to generalize, uh, generally, like people within the same culture would have different feeling about it. They might, like what I mean is like, if you're born in Canada, that doesn't mean um, this idea would resonate with people completely. Mm -hmm. And they might have the uh, same fight as me with the, the, the concept as... Um, being, uh, they might evaluate themselves with a collective concept as like being more on collective side as like if people are happy with me then that that means I'm a good person. It's there's so much here. Like I'm one of one of the things I'm hearing you talk about is this when you talk about actually being like reborn, having to be reborn when you came to Canada, and then it sounds like there's been several incidents along the way where you've had to take a breath and examine and that's not necessarily a choice. That's something that has kind of been foisted upon you. That's uh, like that process of being born is such a creative process all on its own as well. 
do you feel like it was easier for you because you had a connection you were already creative that that was a part of who you were as a, as a human being um, maybe I don't understand the question as like what do you mean as the part I who I were well as a as an artist as someone who's familiar with the processes of creation that having to recreate yourself in some way came more naturally not that you should have to but that it came naturally um well I mean like I feel like that might be um I don't want <laughs> I'm like that makes me feel like oh well I was such a huge <laughs> creative person but um I guess I mostly um trusted my instincts and yes that the fact that art helped me to like go through a lot of hardships uh being um inside my country it still helped me to go through hardships here mm. and um definitely the traditional knowledge of like um intuition and going with my heart um really helped me a lot um there were parts that I was struggling a lot to the point as like giving up on everything. And I guess um, I don't remember exactly how, but like the poetry, uh, I just thought about poetry of my country and like found a lot of healing through this um, narrative that my ancestors were passing to me as um, one point I'd, realize like you know what I'm an immigrant and Rumi was an immigrant and Rumi changed the world Rumi everyone knows the name almost not everyone but like and how at like, one point I stopped and thought like how he could move to another country without speaking the language they appreciated his like he, he was a bit known and his figure was very tangible and but still he had to create that space like what did he do how he, there was no internet there was no like social media how he became worldwide and if he did it I can do it it just I need to listen to him and it's just a narrative passing on to us uh, I feel so that was a moment as um, enlightenment as uh, there is something there for thousand and thousand years that I can use. I, I can't take ownership of it. it was my own creativity. No, <laughs> I think like it was something through universe. Um, everything was planned little by little through centuries that I can use it. Um, I was born in this, the right place, right time, I guess. I don't know. That's lovely. That's extraordinary. And an extraordinary, an extraordinary creative legacy to draw strength from there. So, you know what, I'm going to go and ask, I'm going to ask a question I probably should have asked at the beginning of this, because I think even for myself, uh, it's only recently that I've really begun to understand what this is. Can you explain to people what being Persian means? I know you could probably spend forever talking about that, but, uh, what what is what is Persian? What is that? That what is that? <laughs> oh. um, it, it's a difficult concept to explain, and I feel like it can vary from person to person. Mm. Um, and there might be a lot of emotions under it. There sh there would be a lot of emotions under it. As um, Persian is this. For me, this identity, uh, for some, my understanding was a kind of resistant against colonization by um, Muslim world, uh, like in 1500 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of like, we were not allowed to speak our language for 200 years. And um, a Persian poet, Ferdowsi, created this legacy um, of a huge uh, poetry book that uh, preserved the language. And um, then the, it, it's a struggle of identity, I feel like, as who we were as Persians, our values, and who we have become. Um, 
because we were impacted by colonization. And it's not only um, uh, like the tangible colonization of the Islamic world, but also the impact of European countries. And um, we lost a lot of language uh, um, and our rituals, even uh, under the impression of like, for example, France or UK, and it, it, all of this play a huge role in, in our history as um, a very silent colonization, as being the, our resources, as for example, oil being used by British for centuries, and a lot of politics play uh, like it impacted our lives without our we having a choice. Mm -hmm. um, and that's we a lot of people like try for that world of Cyrus as um, women and men were equal women had um, like pregnancy leave and there was it was the first human rights um, book or rule set of rules being written in the world or um, having something as person police, that's pe what people strive to be again, like a set of values that um, feels a bit more right and resonate with us more. Of course, the country has been impacted by a lot of, like we have fights, um, wars with Mongolians and Turkish, and, um, but I feel like it's not necessarily the language because even the language being sometimes called being called Persian for people who do not speak Persian as mother tongue can mm -hmm. be oppressive. Um, so we have a lot of languages and um, accents within the country. We have different ethnicities. Um, so I really don't know like um, how an Arab uh, Iranian would feel or relate to the word Persian or uh, Afro-Uranian would relate to the word Persian, um, a Turkish Iranian, a Kurdish Iranian. Um, for me, I guess the Persian, because I could only speak Persian, unfortunately, <laughs> even though my grandma was a uh, Turkish, uh, like lived uh, within a Turkish area, so she knows how to speak Turkish. I didn't have the that much opportunity to learn Turkish language, unfortunately, but um, I guess Persian is like, uh, for me is that sense of accepting that um, what I, my country was mm. and um, what, uh, how much tra collective trauma we have faced, but we have still survived it. Mm. and really accepting that colonization is a part of it and um, I need to create keep like I'm a part of this um, making the history for future as um, I need to find out how I define Persian to carry it to my child uh, even living here as as I said like for example thinking about Rumi um, was he ever thinking himself as a Turkish or a Persian? Mm. And did he carried on uh, the identity of Persians to the world or the identity of a Turkish to the world? And um, really finding out, am I now Persian as Persian, Canadian, Iranian, Canadian? What am I? <laughs> As yeah. Iranian is a new word, as uh, it got created after war, like during the World War. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I feel like um, that's where I'm like, okay, it's a very short term to define uh, the history. Is um, Persian? I feel like uh, it, it can really co cover thousands of history. Yeah. And Sorry I, for talking. <laughs> no apologies ever. No, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. I know it's an impossible question that I asked it to, and you encapsulated it so nicely. Thank you. Um, 
I feel like there's so much there that could be expanded upon. And I think what I'm hearing is that it's, it's a vast experience, a cultural experience that can't be contained in history or politics or, or even poetry by the sounds of it. It's something that now, it sounds like you're, that many, many people are questioning and like trying to determine for themselves. Who am I? What am I? What does it mean to me to be Persian wherever I might be in the world? Is that, does that sound like it? Yeah. I, yeah, th I guess um, that's very true as um, the last 40, 50 years, uh, there has been such a big shift in the collective identity and like the politics of the country that it's a struggle. It's an identity uh, like um, struggle, identity crisis uh, <laughs> on who we are uh, because what we live in um, doesn't necessarily um, resonate. And it, it, I'm, I know that it's like, I, after moving to Canada, I just realized that's a tr true fact, no matter where you are, no matter which ethnicity you belong, there is something about government that you don't resonate with all the time. Like there are, people are different. Like some people like this part of the governmental uh, like approach, some people like it differently. Yeah. But I feel like that gap is a um, like m for some people is bigger in the country as it's a, it's became black and white, uh, which a lot of people want to define themselves in the gray area as uh, I can have this value with the government, but I can have this value from um, somewhere else as, um it's a very complicated thing, but I, I feel like that's where people didn't have that space. And it's like a fight to really find um, themselves as I, it's not black and white. We yeah. can be gray. I, I, I don't know if anything is black and white, really, truly. I think there, we live in the gray and so much of the times in between the binary. Yeah. yeah. I, on that, can you tell me a little bit more about the, the Persian hive and what makes it so special? What what is it like to be a part of that art hive? Well, it, it's a great responsibility. Sometimes it's nerve wracking. <laughs> it feels like I'm carrying uh, um, too much from my, like as a small human being, it, it, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot of trauma happening, like to hold that trauma within the space. Uh, but it's an honor and it's such a beautiful experience to watch um, how people um, allow themselves to express freely and um, just trusting that um, uh, I'm trying to provide the space that they didn't have just before maybe or uh, they just are trying to relate to each other and accepting each other and just reminding myself as like, I'm not here to change things. I'm just here to make them feel safe. And um, I guess uh, going back, like the, there's a lot of things that happen during the Persian archive that are somehow shocking for me as well in a good way. Okay. And um, I re realized that wow, how much I've forgotten about myself, how much there are things that has been got to the box, even like small memories as childhood playfulness um, that belong to that part of me. And I left that part of me behind somehow. Not everyone um, feel the same. Like uh, there was a member who was saying like uh, she just moved in. So she still feel pretty much connected but uh, for me it is like I'm talking to my co-facilitator and like something I just remember these like words that like proverbs or things like that it's like how I it feels like I'm myself again and that brings mm -hmm. that part of um I guess a feeling how can I say it? it's just like I miss that part Mm -hmm. I miss home and I, that 
place feels like home. Oh, um, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. And that, that feels to me to be some of the common ground between uh, all of the virtual hive people that I've connected with so far. They've all, the hives have all focused on connecting and creating community with people who, I mean, this phrase has come up so often, are, who speak a mother tongue together, who speak a language together. The language, not just a verbal language, but a cultural language, a creative language, uh, an emotional language. And it seems like each person I've talked to so far has said that that has been something that surprised them, that they didn't know how much they needed it until they had it. And as much as you give, you're also receiving and, you know, from that process as well. Is that for you as well then? Absolutely. Uh, I feel like, um, you know, when we talk about archive, we talk about like this church space between home and work. And as an immigrant, where is the church space between home and new place? Yeah. Um, that's where I felt like I need a new home here where I can like still bring some part of like my experiences as like trying to um, find my identity as a Canadian. Um, but like just my experiences as like living as a student and everything. But the, the part of home was alive and it was, it was, it was all gone. Mm. Uh, I, I ha didn't need to grieve for it as it's here within this small space, I'm home. And um, yeah, that I think it, that's definitely like a feeling of like, I really need it. And some people created it with friends. Some people created it with poetry sessions. And like, I know people who have book reading sessions. They had um, chess games in the um, coffee shop. They have different ways to do it. Um, I, there was this uh, book talking about these uh, as carrier groups, as arts really becomes this carrier group, uh, um, like allowing, like creating the space so people can relive their identity, but also create a new identity. So we move towards that together. Fantastic. So what kind of things do people create together when they come to the virtual Persian hive? Well, I mean, it's pretty much like, I guess, any other hive, I believe. But um, sometimes we just remember things uh, that we were creating back as a child. Like, mm. Mm, there's a, like, memories coming. Sometimes people are not comfortable with creating and... Um, just like any usual hive, we just have to promote that, you know, just do a line, like scribble or things like that. Um, sometimes creating can be as, not necessarily creating by ourselves, but creating a momentum as, oh, now I remember of this poem or this song. Can we play that song? And somehow we find, um, we rela relate to each other's emotion by listening to a music as um, a famous singer sang about being homesick. And then that moment, creating that momentum within that space become a creation, I guess. Um, sometimes uh, we just read poems randomly and laughing and that's creation and not necessarily art, like uh, feasible artwork. But um, any creation can be fun, I guess. Um, well, you and I were talking a little bit yesterday in the lead up to this, and uh, I I cannot agree more. There's, I think, I think within our culture, creativity has been commodified quite a lot. And my culture, like, I guess, Western culture, I suppose, but uh, creativity is about producing things. And it's not really. Um, I feel like creativity is to do with engagement and dialogue. And we were talking about how for both of us, it seems that's just as important as anything else that might get created along the way, that sense of communication and acknowledging one another. 
Oh, have you frozen up or have I frozen up? I'm not sure. Are you still there? <laughs> but I love, I think that's one of the things in the Persian hive that I'm hearing, not just about uh, the creative product. It's about like conversation as well in dialogue. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, I missed you a little bit, but I think I got the um, the whole of the conversation. <laughs> uh, yes, um, the, when I see the community groups, for example, on Facebook, um, that collective trauma of not being heard, it's so alive. There's fights over like small things. And uh, people like go to the extreme. And I'm thinking like, what if our country could create a space that people could freely be heard and not being judged? And maybe that's the space they need here is um, they come and make comments and um, like talks about their political views. And sometimes they there's this urge to like, um, make others involved as there's this urge to prove as don't you think I'm right and um mm. because my voice is unheard and um I ha always have to uh, like that's my approach as I'm trying to be mindful as I don't need to get involved with that as this is just a space for them to talk mm. and um being heard and uh, being not being judged and that's the same approach that we have towards our work, just not being judged. And I guess if that's like the talk comes for them first, then the artwork, maybe that's the way to work with it is to make, to allow them to feel safe. Maybe they start more and more digging in the artwork. Um, maybe yeah. it's sometimes vice versa. They would start with the artwork and resist talking and then one point they just start talking. That's, uh, I think that's important and archive, regardless of where you're from or where you are. Uh, okay. And being acknowledged, I think is such a huge part of that feeling of safety. Like there was a comment that came up earlier from uh, someone who's listening out there and the idea of when you talk, the, the art hive is middle space as the middle ground. Um, and she said that in, like, it sounds like not just a place between work and home or school and home, but also uh, love and grief as well. And that's a very, like in that space, if you are not seen or not heard, that what can you do? That seems to me the only thing that is the best, most important job is to be able to acknowledge one another in that space. Um, do you think that that is something, you or I mentioned earlier that there is quite a lot of, uh, there's so much trauma, there's so much collective, so much. So does the trauma take precedent or do you find that there's much joy as well in those moments? Is there love as much as anything else? Oh, I believe that they are not separate. Uh -huh. <laughs> we are yin and yang. And there's, um, um, we always say that um, the end of the, um, the night, the dark night is the sunrise or the light. Mm. Um, and just um, not taking that joy is, necessarily laughing the joy is that space of being heard and um not i don't necessarily might see it but as long as they come back next session that i guess is a place that they felt the joy um yeah. but definitely we also joke around and like uh, we laugh or um as I said, like the parts of the um, culture come up as the parts that we have forgotten. And the one part is kind of mocking each other, but not in a very bad way. We're like, oh, you don't pay attention to me, didn't you? And just these games that we had uh, in young age ages, when we didn't have responsibilities like adults that we have to figure out our life in a new country. And it's so scary. That yeah. space that was 
let it go let's have fun like um all we had in mind was like the homework so <laughs> things like that of uh, or just less like hard experiences as mm. coming here by yourself i guess it's a, such a shift in like oh my god i have to figure it out mm. and that space give us this um environment of we we can have fun <laughs> we can just um invite each other even for fake for dinners and like oh i'm coming and like stealing your food as because i miss that food it, it, just this humor that is familiar for us yeah. and knowing that we won't be judged so sometimes i feel like if uh, i use the same humor in a space that is uh like more dominant culture uh, that like mm, it's not understood properly and I have to be careful of like no don't say that <laughs> can, we, can we talk a little uh, about first experiences in art hives in Canada so before the Persian before you created the Persian hive what was it like was that something you experienced in other art hives was it something what was it like and other per, other art types, I guess, uh, it was a very great experience, mostly. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, had the privilege to always have an art type in my internship site, uh, like more open group, if even we didn't call it art type, but it was the same concept as people come create and we just trust that that creation allows them to um, learn from each other and then express themselves uh, it was very positive in general but there are things that sometimes happen and um, and sometimes I don't know it was my perception if it was that um, you know our unconscious is so compl complicated that I'm like I cannot be the like a judge saying like this is it, the art hive, people there didn't understand what I meant. But generally, my experience was that I cannot be my true, like, I cannot live with that identity as a person, come, like, who lives in Iran, complete, like, take that identity and make it work in this space. Mm -hmm. um, because the identity of the dominant culture is different. As a, like, for example, the concept of time, yeah, um, yeah. as I would not be very careful about time. I'm like, <laughs> but here I had to learn, like, okay, let's be mindful of time. And, um, or there's like this idea of like political talks about politics. And, um, of course, especially in, um, Quebec, I guess, um, because of the historical, trauma as well there is an aversion towards discussing politics and I had to really understand this uh, by digging in and asking other people of like why people got upset why did they don't like I feel being ignored and I took it personal that I'm not accepted here whereas it was like oh it's their collective trauma there is such a big thing about religion and um, <clears throat> trauma here they just don't want to talk about it. Mm. Um, and again, not absolute, but like it's uh, it's a part of history that we cannot deny. Um, and that's where I felt like, I, as I said, like um, I felt so isolated and I needed that space to, uh, that sp safe space to feel comfortable enough to dig in into of uh, the layers of the dominant culture of like asking myself of like to, to not victimize myself but just think let's understand it let's see um and not giving all the points to the dominant culture and just say oh i'm completely wrong let's do what th what they say is right and um like play with the values and see being comfortable enough to pick this value or no, nope, I want to keep this value from my country. 
yeah. or not necessarily my country as like how I was raised within that culture, within but my family culture. But now being here and specifically in Montreal, I feel like if I was in Quebec, this experience could be different. If I was in like Sherbrooke, this experience could be different as this is my reality. I'm in Montreal. And I had a teacher who was from Greece and he was mentioning like it took him um, like 10 years to feel like Montreal or, or no, not Montreal, actually. I don't know like the numbers, but like 10 years to feel like Canadian, 20 years to feel Canadian Quebecois, and then 40 years to feel Montreal Canadian Quebecois who could speak French and English. And these are all layers of identity. And like, it's such a big process to realize who am I? Like. All of those layers. And then you can add in other things as well. You can add in uh, gender, sexuality. You can an- add in uh, like a- like ability, dip- all the different layers that make us or who are parts of us. You know, it's, I think we, we, again, that comes back to my thought that all of you fabulous art hive people out there are provoking, you're stirring up these questions about how I've been welcoming community. I think that's one of the things that I'm, I'm learning through this process that perhaps as someone of privilege as a part of the dominant culture here, I've never had to experience these things or question any of this. And I'm beginning to reflect and think, okay, so who haven't I seen? Who haven't I heard? And who are the people, like, it's one thing to say, everyone's welcome at my art hive, right? My art hive, the community's hive. Everyone's welcome here. But then quite another to really recognize why aren't people, like, why are people not here? Who is not here? Who is not a part of this conversation here? And why might that be? And how, like, what can we do? What do we need to learn to be able to create a a place, a space where people perhaps don't have to feel the weight of all those layers or, or alternatively, they feel light enough to explore and play with those layers. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, I think it's very natural to say my hive because it's like these are our babies, and like we are putting so much thought uh, into it. It belongs to others for sure, but they're our babies. I think we really care about it, and that's that's okay. Uh, so we need to acknowledge that we our passion is very um, valuable. As your passion is very valuable. And what you do is amazing. Um, and definitely, like, not only within, for example, the dominant culture only. I feel like I just realized how much I was privileged as a person living in the capital, speaking Persian. And for sure, there were, like, things that was I had, like, didn't have privilege about it, them. But... And for example, my space belongs to all Persian speakers Mm -hmm. and Persian speakers. It includes um, people from Afghanistan, Tajikistan, and then a lot of other countries, or even um, the second generation uh, immigrants who can speak um, Persian, but they don't necessarily identify as Persian. Mm -hmm. And like they were born in uh, like, for example, Canada, Australia, um, but just acknowledging that, for example, in, within the space, I don't have any Afghan at the moment. And just understanding that there is a trauma between us, um, mm-hmm. what they went through because of their wars. And they came to my country uh, because we... They, we could speak the same language and they were looking for safety and they were not treated very well. Mostly some of them had good experiences, but uh, a lot didn't. And they have been discriminated against uh, like because of their nationality mm-hmm. um, and um, really uh, being patient with this information as um, there's not much I cannot force people. I can just make it better. Is um, just try to invite them, and um, hopefully that's the goal. Is 
having the space that everyone can come in and feel safe and uh, their trauma don't play again in within that space mm. um, uh, it's a journey i guess absolutely now if there are folks out there who are persian who would like to be a part of this persian hive how do you recommend them becoming a part of it how can they join um so uh, we po- we have a facebook page the persian archive or can do honare parsi zabanan um so just uh, going on the page so like following us uh, we just post the link every Thursday, 6 p.m uh, eastern time so we have people from vancouver but the time zone is just like they're mostly um working unfortunately but mm-hmm. we try to even stay longer if we have people from um western canada and um, to host them and uh, give them the space as well. Um, it's Thursdays. Every Thursday, we um, try to not miss any. <laughs> if one facilitator is not there, the, for sure there is someone there. And um, yeah, we, it's a true a Zoom link. And we have a lot of fun. And sometimes it's not two hours. Sometimes it lasts a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just feel free to come in at any time leave at any time you feel comfortable and we are there to create this experience of um, the second home hopefully oh beautiful now we're coming to uh, towards the end so one last kind of area of question or question i'd like to invite you to share out uh just about uh, how art and creativity has played a role in your life and taking care of yourself during these strange times. Is there anything that you think helpful that you find, you think that other people might enjoy as well? Hmm. Um, I'm like, I feel guilty <laughs> because <laughs> sometimes uh, I feel like we have resources, we have the knowledge, but we forget about them. Hmm. Or for some reason, I, we just don't use them. And to be honest, during this time, I did not create that much. And I guess that's part of it as that's fine. Yeah. Um, my creation in the worst times becomes like food. As I create foods that feel like home and that's enough. Um, the smell of food inside the house, uh, it makes it feel like home uh, again. I create home inside my new home. Um, and I, I guess, I don't know, like uh, what people can do is like, just listen to your heart. Mm-hmm. Um, body talk to us and uh, our body tell us what it needs. Um, and, um, you know, our mind, I feel like sometimes rush so much as about worrying about others back home. In, like if our parents are, are not here or even if they are here, but like in different city even like Mm -hmm. two streets away anyway we would be worried um our mind might be worried about like job and our and like safety like financial safety and everything and it can go around and around and around (laughs) and um, just i think that part of like hey i just want to listen to my body and that's fine i guess the body would the heart would tell us where to go Wow, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There and is, the time passed so fast. Huh? It, every week, every time I talk to someone, I think like I could keep on talking for hours. And who knows, maybe we will check in again later down the road and see how things are doing. Um, I know we have, uh, I mean, at least speaking for Oshawa here, we have we have quite a large Persian community. But again, it's it's an interesting, we don't always connect right so uh, i'm just so happy that i could introduce you and your hive to anyone anywhere like within the persian community can participate in that's such a beautiful thing Um, any last minute thoughts or wishes or poems or anything to share with anyone (laughs) um not necessarily a poem but something um came back to me we talked about it yesterday a bit as um there's no Iranian embassy in Canada. 
Mm. And there's no Canadian embassy right now at the moment in Iran. And even though it's politics, but embassy is a huge um, symbol of home. It's a land within new land, and we don't have it. Even if we are aware of it or not, it, it impacts us somehow. Like if I want to ch- go, like get a passport or something, I have to send all my documents to U.S., not even Iranian embassy, it's the Pakistan embassy, and they have to be like um, kind of take care of it. So within thousand miles, there's no place as home. There's no place as Iran. The land of Iran doesn't exist within this uh, north. Oh, I think there's one in Mexico, but um, just saying U.S. and Canada. Mm-hmm. And we need to create that home. We and that even virtually. Um, I hope um, this um, our type become little by little uh, a part of home. Um, I wanted to always call it uh, Jose Abi, uh, like a blue, um, not a pool, but like a tiny, tiny pool that we used to have in old times. The houses were around and the water was in, in the middle yard and everyone would come in, cook in the morning and create. And the senior, the elder would try to teach the kids through stories and everything. And um, this is the, that was all be the blue pound, let's say. Yeah. Um, this is the source of life, water, and uh, hopefully we can create a home again together. Wow, what a beautiful thing to wrap up on. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your openness, your acceptance. For me, and I'm sure for my community, People like you make a huge difference in how we experience Canada. Uh, all of you uh, make our memories and like in the way as when we want to talk about how we became, like how was our immigration experience, mm-hmm. we can name people like you as they were <laughs> open to us. They were accepting us. They wanted to hear about our stories. And hearing our stories and witnessing our stories is a big part of our healing. Thank you so much. You make a huge difference in how I would talk with my kids about becoming an immigrant. Oh, my. I reflect that. I pack at you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us today. And I'm looking forward. We'll connect again in the future. And if there's anything that... I can do that the living room community can do to help grow your community or I don't know, who knows, there might be lots of opportunities to collaborate in the future. Yeah? Thank you. You're such an inspiring person for me. I have a lot of thoughts of like how much I can learn from you. Sure. Absolutely. Hope to meet you again. And like, hopefully in person, let's hope <laughs> everything gets better. Likewise. Likewise. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Be safe and take care of yourself. You too. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I have a little spinny wheel on my thing, so I'm not sure if I'm frozen or if I'm still here. <laughs> if I am still here, and if you can hear me, I would like to say thank you again to Hanie for being here, for being, thank you for being a part of our chat today. Thank you to everyone who watched and listened. And again, if, um, if folks are interested, for everyone out there in the Persian community who is looking for that place, that place to connect, to be with one another, even if it's just virtually right now, what a beautiful place. I can't imagine a more lovely place to be. Uh, so you can visit the Persian Art Hive on Facebook. You can look them up and find them. And of course, I'll perhaps share some other links as well about how you can find them and how you can join and participate. If anyone has any other questions that I can pass along to Hanie, please feel free to let me know and I shall do so. And for everyone new who is watching and learning about us along the way today and the living room community, thank you for spending some time getting to know us a little bit better as well. 
Uh, so I just want to say also that next week we'll be taking a break. Uh, I'm packing up the Living Room Community Art Studio as we move things into storage for now during these strange times. So I'm going to take a break so I can get dirty and do all of that kind of stuff. But I will be back the following week with another wonderful interview, hopefully another virtual hive, so we can shine a light on all the beautiful work that's being done out there and keep creating community and opportunities for us to learn about others and ourselves through connection and creativity. So yeah, I guess that's that for today. Until we can connect and create with one another in person, I look forward to creating and connecting with you right here online. And if anyone feels like it, you can join us tomorrow over on the Living Rooms Facebook page for a live stream art hangout on uh, Facebook Live. We'll be there 2 p.m. till 3.30 p.m. So until next week, thank you so much for joining us. Take care, stay safe, and see you soon. Bye. <laughs>